Hey elementary school, my name is Mr. Clark. I am the middle school Bible teacher, Bible teacher here at CCS. I think some of you recognize me because sometimes I wave to you in the hallway, but today I will be your chapel speaker. I'm going to tell you a secret. This is the first time I've ever given a lesson just to the elementary schoolers. I've spoken in chapel before, but the middle schoolers were there too. But this one is just for kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade. So I'm really excited to be your chapel speaker. I hope that you listen to me today so that you can talk to me in the hallway about the lesson. That would be really cool. I would really appreciate that. So today we're going to be talking about a character in the Bible named Joseph. Remember, our chapel theme for the year is the victory is the Lord's. And so we're going to see Joseph has a very dramatic life. Lots of ups and downs and ups and downs. And at the end of his life, and even through his life, we can see that God was with Joseph and that the victory is the Lord's. And so, because there's so many ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs in his life, I'm going to tell you a Another quick, small secret that even the middle schoolers don't know about Mr. Clark. So, whenever I teach the story of Joseph's life, there's so many ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs that it actually reminds me of a roller coaster. And so here's the secret. My favorite roller coaster is called the Slingshot. It's in Georgia at a place called Wild Adventures. It's my favorite the name of it is Slingshot. The middle schoolers don't even know this. It pulls you up real, real high, and then you go down real fast, and you do a loop, and you do a corkscrew, and then you do a loop, and then it brings you up real, real high again, and you do the whole thing backwards. And so that's my favorite roller coaster, and Joseph's life is a roller coaster. And so I'll put Joseph up here just so we don't forget who our main character is. And now we're going to use this roller coaster on my whiteboard to talk about the life of Joseph. So something you need to know about Joseph, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven brothers. So Joseph comes from a big, big family. I come from a big family. I have Three brothers, three sisters, and two parents, so there's eight of us. Not as big as Joseph's family, but from a pretty big family. And in my family, my parents love me and my brothers and my sisters all the same. They love us very much, and they take care of us, and they pray for us, and my parents have been really, really good parents. And they love us all equally. However, Joseph's dad picked a favorite of Joseph and his 11 brothers. And lucky for Joseph, Joseph was his dad's favorite. And so that's why Joseph's life starts off on a high note, right? We're at the top of the hill. This is a high note. Joseph's life starts out good because he is his dad's favorite. He is his dad's favorite. Joseph's other 11 brothers don't really like this. And so they start to be like, well, why is he dad's favorite? And they start talking to each other when Joseph goes into the other room. Joseph goes into the other room to get water. They're like, man, why is Joseph dad's favorite? Man, I can't stand it. I, sometimes, honestly, sometimes I don't really like Joseph. And so because he is his dad's favorite, his dad gives him a gift. It's called the coat of many colors. It's very fancy and it's very bright and it's something that maybe he can spin around in and it can kind of go out everywhere like it does for Cruella de Vil in 101 Dalmatians, if you've seen that movie. And so he gets a coat of many colors. Of many colors. And so his brothers are like, hmm. Dad's giving him special gifts and this makes them mad. So they're like, why does he get gifts and we don't? And so all of them brothers keep getting more and more mad about Joseph and at Joseph because it's not fair. And then on top of all this, Joseph has two 
god of dreams. He has two god dreams. And so Joseph has these dreams that were given to him by God because Joseph, our main character, has a very special relationship with God. He believes in God and he is faithful and he wants to be everything that God wants him to be and he wants to follow God. And so Joseph has two God dreams. And in these dreams, Joseph's brothers are all bowing down to him in a different form. And so Joseph goes and tells his brothers about the dreams. And honestly, if I'm his brother, and I'm already mad at him, and then my little brother, because, oh, by the way, Joseph is one of the youngest. So what would you do if your little brother came to you and said, you know, I had a dream. God gave it to me. I had a dream. You're going to bow down to me one day. Both of my little brothers, or both of my brothers are little brothers. And I know that I wouldn't be very happy. I'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm your big brother. <laughs> and so Joseph's 11 brothers just get more mad after Joseph tells them about his two God dreams where Joseph's brothers and his dad are all bowing down to him. And so his brothers create a plan. They say, hey, we're going to sell Joseph. We're going to get rid of him. We're so mad. We're so angry. We don't like him anymore. We're going to get rid of him. We're going to take him and push him somewhere else. And so they decide they're going to sell him into slavery. And so his life goes from really good, he's dad's favorite, to all the way down here. He's a slave, sold into slavery. Sold into slavery. Now, slavery is not a good thing. It's not a good place to be. And so part of slavery is Joseph had to do all the chores, every single one, by himself. Joseph had to do all the chores. Right? He had to fold laundry. He had to clean the bathrooms, clean the toilets. Ugh, that's gross. He had to maybe even cook meals. He had to oh, pick up and clean up the room. Joseph had to do all the chores. And so he sold into slavery. He has to do all the chores. But even worse than that, whenever he's sold into slavery, he's taken to Egypt. And so he's not even doing chores for his own family. He's doing chores for a man named Potiphar in Egypt. Egypt is several, is a long way away from his home. And so Joseph is in Egypt. He's taken away from home. He's not with his family anymore. He has to do all the chores for this man named Potiphar. And Joseph's life just is not very good right now. He is, his life is on a low point right now. But even when it's low, even when it's hard, in the hardest times of Joseph's life, he's still faithful. And even better than him being faithful, we're told in Genesis 46, God was with Joseph. And so that's a big deal, such a big deal, that I'm actually going to change marker color because I want it to stick out. God was with Joseph. And so because God was with Joseph, God makes Potiphar, right, who is the head of the house that Joseph is living in as a slave. Joseph makes Potiphar really, 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 really like Joseph. Or God makes Potiphar really, 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 really Really, 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 really like Joseph. And so where a normal slave would have to do all the chores and all of this, Joseph actually becomes the, the head of the household. He becomes in charge of everything. Instead of being on the bottom of the food chain, instead of being treated like the lowest, least important person in the house, because God was with Joseph, God gives Joseph favor with Potiphar. So Potiphar really likes Joseph. And so 
Joseph becomes the head of Potiphar's house. He becomes the head of Potiphar's house. And so, what this means? It means Potiphar trusts him. And so, he is trusted. Which, that's a big deal, right? We always want people to trust us. We want people to think that that they tell us something, they can trust us. I want my teacher to think that if I tell her, yes, I'll do my homework, I want her to believe me and trust that I'm actually going to do my homework. Right? We want to be trusted. So Joseph is trusted by Potiphar so much that Potiphar lets him run his own house. However, you see, we have another low here. And man, it's about to get bad. Joseph gets framed. Do you know what it means to be framed? Let's think. Framed is when someone says you did something that you didn't do. And so someone says, someone goes to Potiphar and says, Joseph did something wrong. And Joseph goes, no, I didn't. And this person goes, yeah, he did. And Joseph goes, no, I didn't. And the person goes, yeah, you did. And Joseph didn't do anything wrong. But Potiphar, right, the guy who's in charge of the whole house comes and he looks at the two people and he says so you say you didn't you say he did and he takes the side of the person who's lying said joseph did something wrong and so because of that joseph gets thrown in jail and so so he gets thrown in jail because he is framed So he gets framed, he gets in trouble for something he didn't do. Oh, I hate getting in trouble for something I didn't do. It makes me so angry, it's so hard. I didn't do it, I shouldn't be getting in trouble, right? But Joseph got in trouble anyway. And so Joseph is in jail. However, you see, we have another rise. While he's in jail, it says God is with Joseph. This is a big deal. I'm going to change markers again. Even in jail, God was with Joseph. And this is the roller coaster of Joseph's life. If he's up or down or up or down... God is with him. God is with him. He had a God dream. He is trusted by Potiphar because God made Potiphar trust him and have favor and made him like him. And so God was with Joseph. And the Pharaoh of Egypt, the Pharaoh is like the president or the king or the ruler or the emperor, the most powerful person in the entire nation, has some crazy God dreams. Just like Joseph had crazy God dreams. And so, the Pharaoh invites Joseph, who's in jail, to come to his mansion, right? His palace, like a king's palace. And Pharaoh says, I've had some crazy dreams, and I want you to interpret them. And so, Joseph says, Pharaoh, what is your dream? And Pharaoh says, I had two dreams. One, where there were seven big healthy cows ready to be eaten great steaks and make great hamburgers. But then seven really skinny cows that looked like they needed to eat more, like they weren't fed by their farmer, come up and they replace the really good healthy cows. And Joseph says, that's interesting. What's the second dream? And Pharaoh says, the second dream is there was really good harvest, right? Everything I planted had grown. Think of like a corn on the cob. And have you ever seen a really good, big corn on the cob? And so Pharaoh says, there's seven corn on the cobs, and they're big, and they look like I'm ready to eat them during my barbecue dinner. And then those seven big, healthy corn on the cobs are filled by corn on the cobs that are kind of wrinkly, and little kernels are falling off, and they're not really yellow anymore. They're kind of brown, and, ugh, and 
right? You can't really eat them, or if you do eat them, like, you're not really going to get full. And so Joseph says, Pharaoh, the Lord has told me what your dreams mean. So even whenever he's in prison, taking a special trip to Pharaoh, Joseph is saying, hey, I'm not interpreting your dreams. God is interpreting your dreams because my God is good and my God is with me. And here's what the dreams mean. And Joseph tells the Pharaoh that his dreams mean for the next seven years, every seed that he plants will grow and produce so much food. Every farm every vegetable, every fruit, every grain, all the wheat that all your farmers farm are going to produce so much food that you'll have way more than you could ever eat in one year. One year. So you're going to have seven years where you just have a ton, a ton of food. Right? Seven years of blessing. But then the seven years after that, remember when the seven good cows turned into seven skinny cows that weren't good for eating? Or the seven good corn on the cobs? turned into seven like kind of brown and not good for eating corn on the cobs. He says you'll have seven years of meant much, but he says after those seven years, everything you grow, it's not really going to grow and you're not going to have enough food for your people. And so you need to prepare for this Pharaoh. And so the Pharaoh says, I need someone to be in charge. I need someone who will save all the extra from the first seven years so that whenever we have seven years without a lot of food, there will still be enough. He says, you know what? Joseph, I want you to be that person. I want you to be in charge of all the food in all of Egypt. And so, Joseph goes from in jail all the way up to second in charge of Israel. Oh, whoops. In charge of Egypt. Now, Egypt was the strongest nation in the world. Pharaoh was the strongest, most powerful person in the world. Egypt had the biggest armies. They had the most money. And so now, Joseph is the second most powerful person in Egypt. And Egypt is the most powerful country in the world. What does that mean? That means Joseph is the second most powerful person in the world. Joseph went straight from in jail to being the second most powerful person in the world, all because he interpreted a dream for Pharaoh. Because God interpreted a dream for Joseph through Pharaoh. Because God was with Joseph. And so, remember his brothers who were his enemies? His brothers who sold him to slavery because they were angry? His brothers who, before they sold him to slavery, they thought about killing him. Right? His brothers were angry at him and they were the enemy. Well, his brothers end up coming back to him. And so during the seven years where there's not a lot of food, Joseph's brothers come back and they have to ask Joseph for food. And so what do they do? They bow down to Joseph. Egyptian powerful person, give us food. We've run out of food. Our farms are producing corn with brown kernels. We can't eat it. We need food. We know that you have food. And so his brothers come back and bow down, making these two God dreams in the beginning 100% true. And Joseph is kind and forgiving, and he looks at his brothers, and he says, What you meant for evil, because you were my enemy, you didn't like me. What you wanted to do to harm me, to hurt me, for evil, when you wanted to sell me into slavery, you wanted to kill me at one point, what you meant for bad and harm and hurtful things against me. God meant for good because God had a plan and God was with me. And now look where I am. I'm the second in charge of all of Egypt. And so we still see God had a purpose. God had a purpose and the victory was God's. Joseph's enemy, his brothers, couldn't stop him because God had a plan for Joseph. And God's plan for Joseph was not going to be stopped by 11 mean older brothers because God has the victory. Victory is God's. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This is a big deal. Even if Joseph's life had ended in jail, even if Joseph stayed in jail his whole life, 
because Joseph had a relationship with God, because God was with Joseph, because Joseph was faithful and trusted God, even if Joseph died in jail, after he died, he would have gone to heaven. Whenever you're in heaven, you get to be with God like your friends. Be with God in person. And so even if he died in jail, I'll change colors because this isn't what actually happens in the Bible. But this is just what happens if you know God. Even if he had died in jail, because he knew God, he would have gone to heaven. And this is what his life would have been like. Like that. Because no matter how hard your life is or how hurtful your brothers are, or even if you get framed and you get in trouble for doing something you didn't do, if you have trust in God and if God is with you, no matter what, whether you actually get to see great success in your life or whether your life is hard your whole life and then at the end of your life when you go to heaven, you get to be with God. No matter how your life goes, at the end, the victory is with us if you believe in God. And at the end, no matter what happens in your life, even if your life doesn't have as many ups as Joseph, even if your life is just one big sad face, right? Right? At the end of your life, if you know God and you get to be in heaven with God, you end up way up here. And so, I hope that you guys can look at Joseph's life and all the ups and downs and see that in your own life, when there's ups and downs and there's good days and there's bad days and there's hard days and there's someone's mean to you or someone takes something from you, I want you to know that God is with you. God was with Joseph in jail. God was with Joseph when he was sold into slavery. God was with Joseph in the beginning of the story when he had his God dreams. God was with Joseph when he was doing really well. On your good days and your hard days, God is with you. And the victory is the Lord's. And I love victory and I love winning. Man, that helps me to be certain that I love God all the more. Have a good day, elementary school. Remember this lesson. Talk to me in the hallway. Tell me what your favorite part is whenever you see me in the hallway. Bye.